Night 2 of RE4 continues. Alright, or rather it's begun. RE4 continues, not the night. This is the second night. Whatever. Let's start. We we finished Del Lago last time. Going straight into Act 2. Hopefully, if, if I'm good and efficient enough, I can get through all this and not get hung up on fighting Mendez again at the end. So let's see how this goes. This cutscene, I realize now, is also slightly diminished because it was designed with Leon's default outfit, which he has him short sleeves instead of the full RPD garb as we have right now. Because otherwise, you're going to miss out on some pretty fancy stacking of transparent textures. Animated textures. <laughs> like, that's the sort of stuff you'd be seeing a whole lot more of if you were playing Silent Hill 3. That game went nuts with it on the PS2. Leon, it's been six hours since our last transmission. I was starting to get worried. Don't you mean lonely? Anyway, I started to feel just needed a little nap. I must That's all. Consciousness. <laughs> lost consciousness. Maybe that has some connection to what the village chief was talking about. Hmm. Can't say. But I'm alright now. I'm gonna continue my mission. <sighs> alright. More ammo. Another flash grenade. Always keep this tidy. Our egg. Our lucky golden egg is still in its spot and... Oh wow, I didn't even realize that I had last left my Peseta account at exactly 20k. Lucky me. <laughs> oh, I know it's from an anonymous person who is clearly Luis. So... More money. And now it is officially night. Oh, yeah. This is such a good change in mood. Like, you've been so used to, like, the late afternoon foggy, cloudy, the, like, atmosphere of the village. And now just things get a whole lot more spooky after, after you let enough time pass. So I don't think anyone's popped into chat or the stream yet to see this, so, uh... Yeah, I'm not gonna spawn that yet. I got... I don't even really need to head back that way, even though that's technically an alternate way to, like, get the El, El Gigante fight started. But it's kind of pointless to do it that way without also getting the key in the other direction. So we're just taking a quick stop to the merchant. Oh, yeah. Let's see. And, oh, yeah, I should probably shoot that. Yep. Always shoot at light sources. Even though this is clearly not a stealth, uh, stealth game. The reward for doing so, clearly, is more treasures. Move that out of the way. Ah, uh, yeah. Little simple block pushing puzzles. <laughs> Wouldn't be Resident Evil without this sort of thing going on. And, alright, the first colored gem for the elegant mask. So, oh yeah, and I'm pretty sure that with this, 
you can absolutely... Yep, jump down right behind uh, where you normally would go to like talk to the merchant. Take some ammo, because why not? What are you buying? Hmm. Depends on what you got. What are you selling? Okay. Yeah, I'm still good on like all the ammo counts that, that I have. I don't need to sell off any excess. Thank you. Ah. Get rid of the pipe. <laughs> Thank the gold bangles. <laughs> Thank you. Still keeping the holding on to the beer stein and mask until those are completed. What yeah, we got enough buying? for some upgrades over here, I think. Yeah. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. Okay. Is that all? <laughs> yeah, just I'll, I'll spread out the because uh, all the three of these are gonna get sold off anyway. I might as well. <laughs> Thank you. Like... Okay, so that's all the capacity. Question is, which do I want to spend money on for boosting the firepower? Shotgun's gonna cost the most. Firepower for the handgun is only 10k. Yeah, I'll boost <laughs> both that <laughs> and the it. rifle. Is that all? <laughs> okay. Thank you. That should be good. Okay. We'll have to boost the shotgun at a later seven. time. It's cool. Glad you're not glad you're not upset at me for yoinking just uh, some rifle ammo off of your shelves, buddy. It's cool. Okay. Okay, now I'm double checking. Yeah, it's like a key treasure and two spinels that are over at the uh, at the next area, the next main one that we need to go to. Uh, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna like trigger the cutscene that most people don't even know exists. <laughs> just for my sake, just to know that I that I've done it, even though I've done it multiple times before. Let's get a let's get an early hello in to the dogs. Come on. Oh yeah. These are not good boys. So do not feel anything for having to shoot uh, shoot these dogs. That will clearly kill you. Also, like the color range that I've got going with like my capture card or whatever is making like the dark shadows especially dark, and thus a lot harder to actually see where the dogs are gonna pop out of. Kinda adds to it, all things considered. Okay. Let's put this little herb right over there. <laughs> what a fantastic game this still is. And to think, it still has, like, even more, like, to go up on, you know? There's even more great, crazy stuff ahead of us. This is far from being this game's peak, like, whatsoever. Yo, Wrath! Yeah. Started not too long ago. Uh... You missed the, uh, I showed off the scene in which you can get, like, a special cutscene of the dogs if you go back to the other side of the dog, you know, where you last came in through Act 1-3. The cutscene that most people never even realizes exists. Huh, that's on, yeah. 
kind of frustrating just how like those kind of how these sort of like uh, notifications just aren't working the way they intend especially since like those are more or less my only way currently of getting that kind of message out there because I refuse to use Twitter Yeah. Yeah, there's always going to be a VOD for this. Even when they go off of the Twitch page, it's like, uh, like they'll always be on my YouTube. It's fine. Ooh, yeah, 500 bars. Actually, just tell me for one quick second, like, uh, does, like, does the image still look fine, even with kind of, like, how dark it is? Because I'm thinking I make... Because not just for, like, how it looks on stream, but even on my current monitor, I'm feeling like I may or may not need to, like, up the brightness just a little bit. Because it's really, like... Uh, for for as much effort as I put into the CRT overlay and to try and, like, color correct the image to give off that... Uh, hmm, probably darker than it should be. Yeah. Let's see. I don't know how much in-game brightness is actually going to help on this by comparison doesn't look like how I recall the game being yeah yeah it's difficult like that though just because yeah it, it's a shame that I can't just simply oh it's fine now okay that's good yeah I'm just sort of lamenting that with my kind of dedication to this overlay and the color correction I need to do it's kind of frustrating that I can't just find a universal setting for contrast and gamma and brightness and then just leave it as is for every game because the settings I like set this for initially worked a lot better with a good number of the other games I tried but naturally they're those are ga uh, games that don't have the same level of darkness or like drabness to their design the same way that uh uh, that the um, uh, that this game does really I agree yes it is like we lost a whole lot more than we gained from the uh, from the jump to LCD after CRTs and even then with all like the praises people are like putting towards OLED and like its improvements over LCD it's still not making up for every last thing we've lost because the thing with the CRTs, especially around, like, a couple years after this point, I obviously remember how people were bringing up how, like, CRTs were no longer cutting it for, when for like, playing PS3 or Xbox 360 games, you know? Because they were very much touting, you know, higher resolutions than 480. And how certain games, like, Dead Rising, I remember being the biggest early example of that, how it just completely messed up, like, HUD elements and subtitles because they were all too small. But the thing is, is that I feel that's unfairly contributed a lot to the reason that CRTs are completely outdated and like, uh, and that uh, video games, even old ones, somehow look better on newer displays. The problem with that is that people always forget that, uh, that like, at, especially in the Western part of the world, in the US, the biggest jump that people had in, like, video quality modes was going from literally composite to HDMI. They completely ignored the fact that, like, 90s and even early to mid-2000 CRTs were starting to get S-video and component cables uh, inputs as a lot more common. And composite is just absolute trash. Like, I'm, like, second only to RF, you know, naturally. But even then, people myself included didn't even realize how big of a jump as video already was when you got it and then component being slightly more as as it kind of brought things more in line with the sort of scar jp21 connector standards that were in europe and japan respectively because those made uh, rgb available something that we never got so it's like yeah, no kidding. You think that these eight, uh, that these like HD games, are like 
uh, look so bad on the CRT when you first played them because you were still sticking to the same boring three-pronged RCA uh, ports, you know? You, d you didn't even have the luxury or opportunity to try and, like, uh, use an S-video or a component to actually split the video signal so that it's not getting all put into, like, a rainbow-tinted garbled mess. And as a result of that, people... And, and of course, there's the obvious, uh... Yeah. HDMI games looked fine on my CRT that I still had, except for Dead Rising subtitles. Yeah. But, yeah, obviously, that's one example. I remember Nuts and Bolts, obviously, kind of... The, the That Banjo-Kazooie game also having the same problem, but... It's still the sort of thing where, like, people greatly underestimate the fact that, like, video standards were improving on CRTs, but just the need that people had for displays that were not bulky or heavy was vastly outweighing the inherent uh, advantages that CRTs had always been providing. You know? Yeah. It's... Man... And I'm still always being reminded how, like, after leaving Washington, like, the biggest loss, the biggest thing I had to give up was that CRT that I managed to find off the streets in Seattle and, like, bring it home for free. And it had S-Video, which was, like, the big thing that kind of really opened my eyes that, oh, yeah, these games on these old tube TVs could always look better than we ever gave them credit for back in the day. Yeah. And it also goes back to how um, uh, I'm once again going to keep thanking you, Raft, for introducing me to Gigaboots because of their uh, because of their whole uh, analog gaming uh, series that they started this year. Like it is, that, that definitely feels like my new life goal. However impractical and unrealistic it may be at this point, because good grief, do they manage to make what are basically camcorder like? Uh, LPs, uh, as it were, look absolutely professional, you know? Because it's, it's a high-quality camera. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, they're funny, too. Like, I can totally see why you recommended it to us, uh, to me, because with, like, their... With the fervor they have for the stuff that they like, as well as their sense of humor, and the way they kind of, like, speak their opinions, I can tell it's definitely... Like... Their, their sensibilities has some overlap with ours. And yes, I am taking the easy way out with this, uh... Whoa, okay. Yeah, I'm taking the easy way out with this, like, crowd of Ganados by just letting them fall. <laughs> to a point? Yeah, it's true. I mean, they admit to, be, uh, to being Muso fans. That already kind of puts, uh, puts a dent in their credibility. Yeah. Very much. Yeah, so now as I'm... Pretty much, like, as I'm continuing to wait for whenever their next analog gaming video are uh, videos are, even though the last one they just put out, like, 24 hours ago was for the Bouncer, uh, I'm still kind of going through all their old content, and one of the things that I've been uh, enjoying going through at 1.25 speed, because those videos are way too long, uh... Their old Castlevania series, where they just played through every Castlevania game or Castlevania adjacent game for the month of May, this is pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, like I kind of have some, uh, like, as uh, like some appreciation for like the things Bouncer does on a technical level. But good God, is that? Oh man. That's probably something I actually wouldn't mind playing for a stream, but you bet that I would never want to pay money for that sort of thing. It's very much like a one-off curiosity I would want to indulge in. But yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I, I already gave in some of my years as a youth with the Kingdom Hearts games. But I quickly backed out of that when I realized that 3 was never coming out in a reasonable time frame. Because they were too busy spreading that franchise thin. You are a child in the early 2000s. <laughs> Whatever. It's like... I didn't... Even then, it's like... I Again, like it was only really until like 
end of elementary school going into middle school that like I was finally able to uh, experience, uh, experience those games. And I think that was still at the tail end of like, because I feel like if I had gone to that or Final Fantasy even sooner, I probably would have been very hopeless as a fan and like forever attached to it. So I'm glad that I'm not. Kingdom Hearts is light. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of things. Okay, I'm actually trying to remember. Oh right, I was uh, yeah, between all the talking and stuff, I was getting distracted on like where the treasure in this area is. But I think I remember now. It's actually on the roof of the cave behind the waterfall. Yeah. At least, but hey, at least so far as like the the month long series for Castlevania, it's always a good time just because. I think I'm always pretty much a sucker for whenever anyone plays through any amount of Castlevania games. Because it's always interesting, especially for the old, like, pre-Symphony of the Night games, to kind of see people get put in the role of the underdog. <laughs> it's like Yagami by how it kills off people's enthusiasm personally. Oh, yeah. Totally, yeah. It's definitely something where, especially with my newfound interest in, like, doing streaming uh, streams a lot more regularly, uh, it's definitely gotten me more curious about, like, trying to, like, take on some of those games myself. Because I've played some here and there, but never, like, far enough that, like, I wanted to go all the way to completion, if possible. And at least, like, thought about it, and... Hmm... When's Contra Hardcore? Uh, that's gonna be part of the double feature stream where I play that and Neo Contra. Because, again, going back to Gigaboots, they very, very much sold me on that game's existence with, uh, when I went through the VOD of them, uh, streaming that CRT that they use for analog gaming for the first time. Like, that was, uh, oh, good God, was that an amazingly insane game. One of the bosses is a freaking bull terrier that talks. <laughs> and that stage starts with you running on top of helicopter blades. <laughs> yes, actually. Yeah, and that kind of wants to get into like a hot take that I've always been kind of maintaining, especially since uh, in collecting a bunch of different games that I want to stream, I decided to check out the 4 megabyte patched uh, version of the Saturn version of Symphony of the Night, which not only improves on the technical shortcomings of that version, but as I discovered, the Saturn version of Symphony of the Night lets you choose between either Alucard, Richter, or Maria off the bat, which is good because my hot take is that even for the good Egovania games, they are immediately more fun and enjoyable when you're playing whatever their equivalent Belmont mode is. Symphony is more fun with Richter. Arya and Dawn are more fun with Julius. That's just how it goes. Yeah. Because it's like, the RPG stuff is... I admit, it is for the most part done well for the kind of game that it is. But considering that it is like a genre that people have colloquially like, decided shares the same space as Metroid... There's a reason that I like Metroid a lot more, just because of how the abilities and progression to your character are based, are strictly based more in tangible items in the environment that have a lot more immediate gameplay purposes, and that they stay consistent, rather than having to upgrade stats or familiars or all kinds of other stuff. I'm too busy just wanting to slice all these bats. I don't know. This is another reason why I started the stream early, because I knew I'd waste time with dumb bullshit like this. Bloodstain is really good. Yeah, I do need to play that, but by the same token, because of my rule of how the Belmont modes are always better, I want to, when I do pick up Ritual of the Night again, because I played a little bit of it on Game Pass years ago but never kept going, is that I want to play through that with, uh, with Classic Mode. Just because I do think that would be a lot of fun. They promised it was good as Symphony of the Night, and I'd say it actually is. I mean, I would hope so. You know, considering that it's the first Egovania Sin Symphony that is not designed for a handheld, first and foremost. And with the amount of time that they spent after the Kickstarter campaign, then yeah, it would have to deliver. Okay, so I got the two spinnels. And I got that little bangle. I am now taking the shortcut back to the merchant over 
here where we have to face El Gigante. Now then. Obviously gotta sell off these treasures. Yeah. See, and it's funny too, because like, despite kind of my uh my talking down on like the RPG aspects of Egovania's. I still kind of want to also still play through like the GBA and DS ones as part of like a stream series. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're always. Uh, what are you? Buying? I mean, it's a good distraction. I ain't what complaining. Are you but yeah, like down the line, I definitely would want to like try playing through like the GBA and <laughs> DS you. games in full and. More for my own sort of morbid curiosity, as it were. Because there are sometimes, well, where I'm willing to play a game that is not exactly great, but if I think that it satisfies my curiosity or gives me things to talk about, I want to do it. And that is, I want to do a stream series where I cover the PS2 Castlevania games. The extremely mid-quality Lament of Innocence and Curse of Darkness. Which... Which, those are games that, you know, like, despite how I'm, like, describing it and wanting to do, like, a stream on it, it's not that, like, I would be going through, uh, I wouldn't be going through those blind, because I played Lament of Innocence before, and I've played half an hour of Curse of Darkness before I decided that this was just going in a completely different direction without fixing the core problems like the Lament already had. Because... Like, 3D and Castlevania really is such a sordid topic that always has, offers a lot of things to talk about. Because it's a transition that just never worked for that series. It should have, but it never did. Let's see. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, I'm generally of the opinion of those two games that I think Lament is better. Well, yeah, when you when you throw DMC one into the equation, it really like it it doesn't even become a contest in that in in that case. It's like, what what is even the point? Oh wait, I actually have twenty two thousand. I could have just upgraded the shotgun right now. The the firepower. I'll probably need that a lot just because for El Gigante. But yeah, it's the sort of thing where like, um, and the idea behind it is that. With Curse of Darkness, it goes back to the same problem I generally have with with Egovania design philosophy already, is that they're inherently action RPGs. And the RPG stuff I just don't what want to deal with for whatever reason. That old? So you yeah, yeah, so you take that and combine it with the already like slow movement speed and boring environment design that was already a problem in Lament. It's like, yeah, no, no kidding, I bounced off that game when I first tried it for half an hour. It was like, it felt like such a slog just to run through. But, but for, at least with how I want to do it, because I don't decide on streaming games without some sort of clear plan that isn't to just boot up, go into blind. I've decided that if I do Lament, I'm going to use the all skills uh, playthrough, which avoids the uh, one of those that game's problems where your whip combos and other moves are RNG drops. And then for Curse of Darkness, I want to at least give it a chance on Trevor mode. Because I would hope that even a middling 3D Castlevania game like that would still respect my take that the Belmont modes of the Egovanias are always better than the default modes. I would at least like to believe that. Anyway, here's a real good cutscene. Introducing the boss and showing these Ganados just getting massively wiped by this thing. <laughs> Can't believe Lament and Curse of Darkness ended up mattering in the past, in the past few years because of Netflix. Yeah, it is weird. And the fact that, like, they made significant changes that they might not as well, like, count as the same thing anymore. And honestly, I'd say that's for the better. I already like Isaac in the Netflix series a whole lot more than original Isaac. Even though, uh, Isaac, voiced by Liam O'Brien, is delightfully hammy. Oh, don't even remind me how much worse this fight, uh, that this monster was made in RE5. 
Like, yeah, well, yeah, let's turn this big monster that you've used to fight in arenas into a turret section. Boy, that'll never go wrong. Ugh. RE5 may or may not be on the docket for a future stream, assuming that I find someone that I'm willing to play co-op with. Though, that might be possible, because I recall my co-commentator for the LPs I've done, he's played RE5 a lot. It... What the fuck? Dude, I pressed! I pressed those! Ah, whatever. Good enough excuse to use that. But yeah, Kaboom Dragoon, he's played RE5 a ton, so it's like... Probably once when he's done with his move, and of course, like assuming that he does have the uh, the PC Gold Edition, then like we could totally uh, like try streaming that a co-op run. Because I've still not played it co-op. I've played it. I played it solo with the Af with the Alone in Africa mod, which is designed to make your uh, AI partner both invincible and invisible. But it doesn't change the fact you can still put guns on their person so that. Uh, so you end up in a situation where uh, the uh, where you basically just have floating guns helping you, and you don't have to babysit the AI. It's great. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like I can totally respect it being a very good co-op game, but even then, like I know full well that my expectations are set in stone, no matter what. That it's always going to be a lesser experience compared to this game. Okay, now that Huey is distracting the do uh, the El Gigante, we can get these items from the sheds without uh, without him crushing it. Hopefully. Hopefully, assuming that it does not lead him to... Okay, yeah, he's still distracted. Good, good, good. Just grab him, grab him, grab him. Okay. 24-7 storage box. <laughs> okay. Well, at least I got three green herbs. If I ever get down to danger health again, I'll just mix th uh, three at once and be done with it. No, 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 no. What was that range on the grab? Like, come on. Uh. There we go. Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna run through the ammo that I have in my rifle, not reload, and then switch to the shotgun as a backup. What? Are you kidding? I... Ah. No, I'm restarting. Screw that. I... I... Uh, I was not looking at my controller. I was pretty sure I hit the B button, but I just did not register. Yeah, freaking com uh, command grabs. It's ridiculous. You kind of forget the, the differences on how much bigger of a pain this guy becomes between normal and professional. <laughs> Just me going, I take the throw! Okay, no, no, no. Just gotta hold out again until Huey from Haunting Ground comes to save my butt. And I can get the stuff from the... What the? Ow. God damn it. Admittedly, for how much more exciting and fun the bosses are in RE4 compared to Classic RE, they just, they're still prone to a lot of, like, the... to not being that amazing in the grand scheme of, like, bosses in all video games. You still got a lot of, of, like, limitations to contend with regarding, like, your player movement and abilities. Ah, uh, come on. Keep him distracted, boy. Oh! Ah, I swear that should have... Oh, I guess it's just because I'm not... I'm still not hitting him quite in the head. Okay, whatever. Comparing between genres doesn't work like that. Yeah, but tell that to everyone that says that FPS boss fights still aren't great, even with Doom Eternal. 
And even and, and even, I'm and even then, like I'm still fond of what they try to do with the bosses in Eternal, and even I'm still critical of their shortcomings. Streaming the Doom DLC arc? Nah, my uh my laptop, like, I'm only really able to, like, still, like, stream that game. Uh, not stream. I'm only really able to play that game at, like, all low settings just to get the frame rate I want. I don't want to, like, uh, complicate things further with the, uh... What? Ah! Shoot. But yeah, I don't want to complicate, like, things on my setup further by also having to share CPU space with that game and OBS. So, yeah. If we're being real about bosses in all genres, shmups pretty much always win. I could see that, yeah. Like, they're very simple on the surface, but you're able to get away with a lot with, like, different designs and patterns. Because they all manage to work in some ways based on, like, your, uh, on just those two-dimensional planes. But yeah, Doom Eternal's, uh, that DLC is just going to be played in my off time. I'll definitely talk a lot about it next time I stream. Because I'm sure I will have a whole lot to talk about with that. Oh my goodness, that trailer got me so excited. Oh no. Oh no. What the? Literally, like... Oh. This is bad. Especially since I am now out of any health items except for the golden egg and I refuse to use it. Oh, no. You say I got this, but I'm still not sure. Oh. I still can't believe that he can literally, like, kick you like that. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't got this. I don't. Yeah. And because this is professional, the dynamic difficulty ranking does not work on this, so... Oh, oh, this is terrible. Like, I've I've been more worried going into this about the amount of time that I would be spending on fighting Mendez because I always recall him at least in the first third of the game, him being the boss that gave me the most trouble. I think it's just because of like the stream setup and all this talking, whatever, that I'm losing focus on how to get around El Gigante's shit. You know, it's just no idea why. <laughs> Okay. Okay, well, you can still talk about it and all that, just, you know, I may or may not try and respond nearly as often. Yeah. Heck, I'm gonna play it safe and just let him expend his, his freaking trees. Just run on underneath his gigantic crotch. Okay. Also, I think the other thing is that I was just constantly missing headshots or whatever it was. Because, yeah, he still takes more damage up there. Gotta make this rifle ammo count, man. Thank you for continuing to help me, uh, Huey, from Haunting Ground. A game that I will probably get around to playing, but not legitimately because fuck trying to buy an actual physical copy of that game anymore. Thank you, Internet and YouTube personalities, for o completely overselling niche PS2 horror titles. Looking at you, Rule of Rose. Oh yeah, and also, Blood Will Tell, for whatever reason being up there, even though it is not a horror game. And honestly, I still do not get how that even managed to, like, jump up in price the way it did. Like, it's a... Like, it's a goddamn hack and slash game made by Sega that's based on an old Osama Tezuka novel. Not novel, a manga that didn't even get finished in its day. Like, it got cancelled. Oh, what? I thought that would have triggered the scene where the... Oh. Just... 
Give me a freaking break. There. Ugh. The detaching limb game. Yeah. The one where it starts in black and white because you have prosthetic eyes and not real eyes. And once you get actual eyes, like, the game becomes a lot more vibrant and colorful. It's cool. I, I played an ISO of it on my uh, hard drive. I got most of the way through it. It's pretty interesting. Clunky, but, I mean, like, it's the kind of niche PS2B game that, like, I'm totally all for. Oh, God. What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? Turn around so I can actually hit your head. Nope. Not getting me there. Not this time. Woof. Yeah. It's okay. I got everything out of that out of those huts. It's fine. Okay, now we're back to shotgun. Okay, good. A or B, which is it? Ugh. Sure wish I had a controller with actual auto fire at this point. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be the day? No, no. Ah, I thought he was going to do the downward punch. Ah. Well, I'm not going to combine all three of those greens. Oh my god. I cannot believe he's literally designed to, like, combo you like that. That is absurd. Yeah, corner trap. It's not even that. He literally did the exact same thing to me, more or less. Like, and I wasn't even anywhere close to my back against the wall. Oh, you know what? Yeah. When in doubt, just flash him. Okay, that, that works. This should be the final time I need to do this. Three times, please let it that be enough. Oh, thank God. Oh, man. Oh. Well, okay. At least this isn't a cutscene, so you don't even have to do the QTE where you dodge his des his Rondo-style desperation attack. <laughs> El Gigante Culo has been vanquished. Oh, yes it has. Yes, it has. Ugh. Well, that's fine, so... Yeah, I used up a red, green, yellow. And all the green herbs that I got in this arena. Ugh, fantastic. Actually, double checking just to make sure on my treasures that I did grab the, yep, the two spindles that were in here. Yeah, so let's just. Oh yeah, can't forget the money, fifteen thousand pesetas and gold bars. Uh, yeah, and like one thing that's related to El Gigante is that makes me like this version of RE4 more than all the others. It's the double Gigante fight later in the game. The one with the molten uh, lava pit. The fact that there's straight up a glitch where you can still get the money from one of the gigantes you drop into the lava if you exit the arena and go back in. Like, that is vital. That is vital to my strategies of making sure that I can maximize on my, uh, on my weapon upgrades whenever possible. Okay, now I at least remember up here... Yeah, we got we got dogs in the distance. Here, boy. Remember, they are not good puppers, so it is okay. Now, hold on to that green. We'll sell off that TMP ammo eventually, but yeah. Okay. Now into the church proper, and we can finally end this first chapter of Act 2. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, man. But 
this game. So good. Even when you're getting your ass beat by it, it is still good. Okay, so... I'm just trying to double check my corners. Oh yeah, a little barrel over here. Oh, an extra flash grenade to make up for the one I had to use on Gigante. There we go. Yep, that's closed. The most easy timed jump prompt in existence. I honestly don't know if you can even screw up that jump off the chandelier. Let's see. Yep, that's right. For red. With green, it will be... that and then blue will be yep that's right amazing puzzles ooh an incendiary don't mind if I do oh they are yeah, like, like, that, like the the mocking tone is not in like in any sort of like derisive uh, derisiveness for it, you know. Like, I do think in the context of this kind of game, like those sort of puzzles make a lot more sense than they do in in even classic RE, to an extent. But then again, I feel like classic RE still wouldn't be quite the same without like those puzzles. I'm at least glad that they're not, like, to the degree that they are sometimes on some of the Silent Hill games with their puzzle difficulties. Because they're adjustable, but, like, they're... They get real nuts on those games sometimes. Oh, yeah, and because we have the RPD costume, we also get the other Ashley yes. costume. Don't come! Hey, take it easy. No! Get away! Calm down. Everything's going to be just fine. Ma'am, these Spaniards, did they make you dress like this? Uh, wear your actual what? clothes. My father? That's yeah. Right. Yep, it's the ballistics costume. <laughs> Man. That said, I wish they had the idea it's for Leon. Ashley's suit of armor in this myself. game and not the PS2 version. I'll send a chopper over right that would have been that would have been a lot more worthwhile and silly, I think. Out of the village, the chopper will pick you up beyond there. Got it. I'm on my way. But then again, if they put it in this version, I somehow doubt Mikami would have had the idea of making it so that if she's wearing the suit of armor, enemies cannot pick her up. I imagine that wouldn't. No, that wouldn't have been in this version. Because there are, like, even outside of the obvious content editions and later versions, like separate ways and whatnot, there are other, like, very minor changes that go understated or even forgotten just because of how surprisingly different in, in like, key minor areas that this game was. Like, um... So, like, I'm not gonna guarantee that I'll play Assignment Ada on stream after doing this, but... I think one thing that does need to be said about Assignment Ada on this compared to any other version of RE4 is that you, as Assignment Ada, you don't get the knife. That was something that was only added in the PS2 versions onward. Or even the fact that on professional mode in all the other versions, you don't get access to the tactical vest. Which honestly feels like an unnecessary kind of like extra layer of difficulty just because... Like, if you're doing really good on normal, you can basically get the dynamic rank high enough that it's basically, like, professional. It's just that it's not always possible to keep it, uh, like, up there all the time, you know? Because you'll sometimes miss shots or take damage. So, I don't know. I'll take the girl. Who are you? If you must know, my name is Osman Sadler. 
the master of this fine the most greasy religious, religious community leader who sounds like want? he doesn't even know the to first thing about actual religion like not even a cult of course. No longer will the United like how do you States look at this dude in any other context and think oh man so he's got the charisma to lead an entire religious following daughter. In order to give her our power. But then again, there probably are actual cults out there with even less savory people than this asshole. Yeah, that's probably how they get you. Like, it's, le it's, it's less of what he what looks or sounds her? like. It's just the fact, I don't know, we look at my cool cloak. Look at my ornate staff. Oh, Doesn't it make me look important? A party when she returns home to her loving father. <laughs> but before that, I thought I might bargain. I love Leon's perpetual so done with your shit look any time he is in Sadler's presence. He's like, ugh. I just want to shoot this guy right now. Money will lead you nowhere, Sadler. Exercise my right as an American to shoot anyone who pisses me off. When I was unconscious. Actually, that's probably hitting a bit too close to home now, what with all the awful stuff that's happening on this side of the pond. When the eggs hatch, you will become my puppets. Involuntarily, you'll do as I say. I'll have total control over your mind. Don't you think this is a revolutionary way to promulgate one's faith? It's also a mass of human rights violation in every possible freaking sense. Hey, Leon barely was a cop. True, he was only that for a day. Yeah, he's safe. He, he's an exception to the all cops are bastards rule. Leon, what's gonna happen to us? Yeah, I can accept that. But then again, where does that leave, like, Chris and Jill and the rest of Stars? Who's... Who's to say they weren't also being called in to hold up the corrupt institutionalization of the police force? But yeah, Leon's a good boy. I mean, he has to. He somehow manages to, like, keep falling over for Ada, and Ada keeps entertaining the idea of just leading this dude around. Yeah, that's probably, like, the worst part. I mean, he's literally, like, supposed to be the bodyguard for the president and his family. <laughs> but, yeah, it's just... Yeah, games like this are just a lot better at being able to justify this stuff because they're able to, like, avoid having to, like, try and detail, like, their entire worldview and universe anywhere close to how it is in real life. It's silly just how that all works out. <laughs> Ooh, red herb. Get that ready. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Like, I guess it's kind of like one of the unintentional, like, benefits of the fact that this, despite this being a series that features a wide variety of, like, international, like, characters and, and different backgrounds, it's like, it's still a Japanese-made game series. <laughs> that worldview is gonna, like, be clearly looking at the rest of the world and, it, and the influences they want to take in a very different light from of the people that are actually living in it. Okay. But at least now we're at the part where this game proves once and for all that yes, you can make an escort mission good. Well, obviously that part's pretty good because the uh, because the character you're escorting literally gives you a suggestion. Oh yeah, got set on fire. No, 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 no. Oh. How did he... That was the same dude I'm pretty sure that was on fire. He somehow managed to put himself off, like, no longer on fire, just so he could grab Ashley. That is insane. Yeah, it's like... People that complain about this just because uh, shows that they have more of a. Uh... Oh, you saw two guys come towards you Ark, after you shot the wagon. Yeah, those are the people that I was referring to. Like one of them got set on fire, and then 
But I think because he was still close enough that for some reason it triggered like his AI to decide, okay, Ashley's close, time to grab. But yeah, it's like, you can tell the people that just hate on this are clearly coming from a perspective that all escort missions are bad on principle. Yeah. Grab cancels fire, it is known. Clearly, I know it now. <laughs> no! Oh. Oh my goodness, I, I faked myself out. The wood texture made me think that there was a snake in that box. I cannot believe this. I am losing my mind. <laughs> Okay. Now, if I recall, though, there is a spinel up here that responds at night. It's in this, uh... Yep, it's in this nest. Yeah, the game drowns you in ammo. Even when you're being extra conservative with your ammo, that you end up having even more than you're comfortable with holding on to. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, this is the best escort mission because it sets very clear limits for how the AI needs to work. Like, it always tails behind you. You can push a button Wait, to make it either stay follow. or follow. There are designated hiding spots you can put them in, which makes combat encounters a lot easier where where she might be hanging around. Like, it's great. What else well, needs to be said on that front? What are you buying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what we're getting. You know it. You kind of remember how well balanced the game is because you get a lot of ammo, but you're down pretty quick, too. Yeah, but again, it feels more Thank the case you. if is this is, like, your first time. Thank you. That, because I definitely feel like with how I play and how I've explained in the last stream... I definitely hit a lot of points where it feels like it's overbalanced to give me more ammo than I need at the moment. But but for most people when they're starting out, yes, it's balanced totally right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Yes, our handgun that's been upgraded halfway worth 22,300 pesetas. We are going to sell that right now. Thank you. What are you because buying? it's Red Nine time, baby. Ah, a choice of an avid gun collector. It's a nice gun stranger. All right, now then. Oh yeah, I also I do need to. Uh, hmm. Huh. Okay. Time for a massive reorganization of things. Definitely wish I had that large att attaché case option right now. Instead of being stuck with a medium. Or maybe it, it was in there and I just missed it. <laughs> but no, that couldn't be it. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be closer to like when you get to the castle. Yeah. Because again, I like my inventory organized in a way where the placement of items makes sense. Which is to say, at least until I get the XL case... This is how weapons get organized. Though I'm also going to have to do something about the... Because, uh... at least for right now, I'm also going to be getting the stock. And that's going right at the bottom. And yeah, you, Golden Egg, are going right in that corner. Thank you. Is yep, stock for the Red Nine. Fortunately, it's still only 1x3. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. What are you buying? And yes, we can get straight to upgrading the Red Nine right away. And I think that's that all? we'll get <laughs> all that of all? these first <laughs> round. Is that all? Yep, Is that all? totally. <laughs> Thank nice. You. Extra capacity, reload, firing speed, firepower. Awesome. Best handgun ever. Blacktail is a good follow up, but seriously, this is where it's at. And only people who don't say otherwise are memeing it up going how the TMP is clearly better than the Red 9 is. <laughs> is in all situations. Just because they want less inventory. Uh, because they want, like, a gun to not have inventory space for the stock. Like, come on. This also, funny enough, was another one of those, uh... One of those things that demonstrated how broken the Wii version is. 
because with how good your aiming is, uh, you actually don't need the stock in that version because, like, you can just aim with perfect accuracy with the Wii Remote. It's silly. Okay. Right, so the next two... Yeah, I think the next two spinels are in the typewriter that's up ahead and in the main village where we had that big fight in, uh, in chapter one. Oh, yeah, that, this gun just sounds so good. Yeah. We RE4 is a light gun game. Pretty much, a light gun game with the ability to move freely. <laughs> Okay, I think it is in this room. Okay, Ashley, get over here. Stay out of the fire. Alrighty. Yay, another spin hole. I never mentioned it, actually, when I got to this room for the first time. Or maybe I did. I forget. But I want to say it was something to do with just how the, uh... Just how good the save themes are in, in this game. Heck, in in the series in general, where like even the lesser games like RE Zero and Co Veronica still have good save themes, it's kind of crazy how that has been like the one consistent thing throughout this whole series that has remained at an insanely high level. I love it. Yeah, it's a good save theme in that game too. I would agree with that. Yeah, Th said. Oh yeah, I'm. Oh, I'm also remembering. I did touch on this in the stream for uh, for this last time, but like I also kind of mentioned how like the remake two theme uh, save theme when you hear it is very good, but the problem with it is less the actual like composition and more the implementation because of how that game decides that it doesn't want to highlight how good its music can actually be by just limiting it. Yeah, just that sound mixing, it makes no sense. Like, there's always a good reason why whenever I go back to Remake 2, I keep the classic soundtrack on right until I get to the escape sequences because the new themes that they have for the... What? No, 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 no! Oh, god damn it! why did I think to do this? That was dumb of me. But yeah, like, the escape themes in both Claire and Leon scenarios in Remake 2, the new versions are great. So it's like, I at least switch back to the original sounds just for that. Because you gotta. I mean, like, even though the original escape theme's a classic. Okay, yeah, so don't try and climb up that tower yet. Not until you are confident you've cleared out all the Ganados in this area. What the? Oh, oh no, 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 get out of there! What? I am sucking ass so bad right now. Ah. <laughs> yeah, he did Jordan my ass real good. Well, at least it was generous with that headshot. <laughs> okay, where are you people? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, just keep... Focusing. And also keep moving forward occasionally because they could literally come from any direction if they want. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Floaters from mid range, tell me about it. Okay. I am. Um, hmm. I don't want to, like, throw the, uh,. Uh, nah, I'll, I'll still keep the flash grenades just because I do want to, like, save them if I get into a situation where there are a ton of Plagas active. 
Because you know they're gonna. At least use the regular frag. But I'm saving everything with the uh, to do with the flame and flash grenades until I get to the cabin. You always want to like make sure enough is saved for the cabin. No! Oh! Uh, I hate to say this, but you need it more than me, Ashley. And... Oh. Oh, come on. I could have waited. Wait, hold on. Did I actually just give only give myself the uh the herb and not to Ashley? Oh my goodness. What a horrible mistake. Oh. I am getting real sloppy tonight. I have no idea how it's come to this. Oh wait, there's uh some gumption would do her good, yeah. Eh, whatever. At least in the next, uh, at least in the next uh, major room and the cabin, you don't have to worry about like dragging her around while all this is happening. Anyway, I think it's safe now that I can go up the ladder and get the spin off. Assuming that it is up here. Yes, it is. Okay, back down. Oh, no, Ashley, I was... Mm. Alright. Well, she at least has no problems getting caught from, like, those high falls or whatever. Okay, so that's the one night spinel at this, at this point in time. So yeah, it's just a matter of going back through the chicken farm, and then we're at the, uh... Yeah. She wanted an excuse to fall into Leon's arms. Oh, yeah. Although, to be fair, I'm pretty sure Leon's the type of person who wishes that he'd rather fall into some other woman's arms instead. Just because I forever in my head that he, uh, that he is a sub to Ada's Dom. Well, that, that's more than fine, Oni. Yeah. Again, you'll still have Vaz that you can, like, uh, look back up later to, you know, see more in detail the moments that I screw up because I'm not paying enough attention since this is professional. Oh. Okay, whew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What a brilliant idea. Thanks, Shinji. <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm just thinking of that meme image, but replacing Gears of War 2 with RE4, so it's that the problem I have with RE4 is that it's almost too good. <laughs> because it is. It is too good. <laughs> It is immaculate in practically every conceivable way. Even if you can, like, come up with, like, reasons to complain about how the island is, like, the worst section of the game, it is still leagues better than most other games. You know? It's still better than, like, whatever the equivalent section you could, like, make an analogy to in RE5, for instance. You know? Which I would say is basically the whole tri cell headquarters or whatever after you find the uh after you go through the uh, through the native areas ah okay i'm at least getting uh, i'm still getting lucky with the head pops what the where the no oh no oh no uh I don't want to use this until I find the uh, find the yellower, but oh, screw it! Oh, 
Okay. Let's pop this lady. Okay, that does it. I think that's good. I'll still take care of these bear traps. Because the last thing I want is for Ashley to get caught in them while I just maneuver around them deftly. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. We'll keep the... Yeah, we'll hold on to that. Yeah, totally. Oh, oh, there's another one right there. More pesetas. Just gonna make sure. Gotta be very thorough and professional, people. That's how you gotta play Resident Evil 4. How you gotta play for Resident Evil. You know, he could have just, like, stood there, I guess, to a degree. Ow. That, I was an idiot. He did not stay staggered long enough for me to drop down. But yeah, it's like he's literally surrounded himself with a whole bunch of bear traps. If the place wasn't so, like, brightly lit, he could have just tried to lure me, uh, lure anyone in here and let them get stuck. It would have been the perfect trap otherwise, but again, these Ganados, they're not bright. They are not at all. But hey, at least I'm still at green health. This is fine. Also, let me double check where my, uh... Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping by the time I get to Chapter 2-3, after the cabin fight, that I do have enough money for, like, buying the rocket launcher. Because that's a strategy that was definitely another thing that evolved over time for me in, like, later playthroughs where I realized... There is actually a legit reason to ever buy a rocket launcher from a merchant as opposed to just getting the one you find naturally. And I think you can picture exactly what it would be used for. Come on, Ashley. Oh. I mean, there was... There was literally a door right there. <laughs> But whatever. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And another instance of Ashley being a very useful character in an escort mission. I only use the rocket launcher on Verdugo. Yeah, I I do use it on him as well. But I found another reason to get a rocket launcher before that. And that's for the second El Gigante fight. Because, let me put it this way. If you're going for all treasures like I am, trying to get every single collectible in that hallway with El Gigante is a pain. Because you can't get all of them in time without him completely busting up all the, the sheds that they're in. Welcome. Rocket on Salazar? I I could see that. Though I kind of generally don't go for it simply because say? I already have the Broken Butterfly by that point, and I just save all my ammo for that. <laughs> TMP. Is that we don't say that name in this house, young man. <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? Not unless it's to speak shame about it. Come back. <sighs> okay. Let's see. Actually, uh... Oh, right. I keep forgetting that there was even a typewriter back there, but... Oh, it's not gonna matter. I already made it clear that I'm not even going to, uh... 
I made it clear that I'm not even going to go for a no-deaths run. Like, I already choked and, like, ate it on uh, El Gigante the first time. As well as shooting the lake and causing Del Lago to eat me. So that's two recorded, technically. So yeah, I don't need to go back to the, to the uh, save point right now. Okay, so yeah, where we're at... 63 spare handgun ammo, 21 for shotgun... 10 rifle with 9 loaded in here. 3 incendiary, 3 flash. A single green herb, which I'm pretty sure there is still like a red and yellow in that uh, in that cabin. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Though everyone, the, yeah, everyone still remembers this. The biggest like resource drainer. Like the earliest big one that happens in this entire game. And it's so memorable that so many other games have had, had to try and rip this off and fail every time. Because they never get it quite as good as this did. Not even its own series. Yeah, this sequence, I love it. Also, this cutscene, because of one of the best dumb lines ever from two of these characters. Well, I see that the president's equipped his daughter, daughter with, with ballistics, ballistics too. too. How rude! And I don't believe there's any relevance with my figure and my standing. Who are you? Oh, oh, I love how she tries to like tell uh, tell Louise how like his come on is so awful, but the way she tries to come back at him is equally as terrible. The president's daughter is she? Well, you know. Don't worry, she's cool. Eh, never mind. There's supposed to be some kind of obvious. <laughs> oh yeah. Before you turn and yeah, and you say best character, uh, Wrath. Another reason why it's the best character and part of why it influences my gun making deci uh, purchasing decisions. He also got a red nine. Granted, he doesn't have the stock, but I imagine he's a badass enough that he doesn't even need to like, uh, doesn't even need it to stabilize his aim. He's just that good. Okay. All right. So first things first, get all the key items. Mix the yellow with the red and green. Oh yeah, we all were sad. <laughs> Our favorite Spanish ex-cop. Best char character is Hunnigan in this game. I, I mean, she's up there. I suppose. I don't know how much better I feel about her in RE6 compared to this, though. I mean, they're both essentially in the same role. She's not going to, like, the same length of dumb nonsense that all the other characters are. She's, like... Yeah. In all our incarnations, she's basically the character who's, like, on the comms all the time and is your ever-present voice of reason. Yeah, she was in 6 because you were playing as Leon again. Oh, absolutely more interesting than any RE5 character. Even taking into account how absolutely absurd some of them are, like Irving. So yeah, that's where Ashley is. They'll never get to her. And some of them have already gone inside. Excellent. Okay. Keep it coming. And I'm and no, even even intentionally, I am not gonna go out of my way to try and shoot a Louis uh, Louis just to to show what he does because that would mean having to start over at the beginning of this. But yes, you can shoot at him, and he totally just kills you because he's like, dude, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Are you five made up for it by massacring Jill? Ha 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 ha! I'll be back after my cry. Oh, man. That was a close call with the, uh... Oh! Okay, that did not hit him or anything. That's good. Oh. Really wishing I had that attache case large right about now. Just saying, game. Oh. 
Like, it's all... Yeah, it's just... It's already bad enough that RE5 was drawing flack just because the early versions of it in previews was making it seem like you were only just killing, like, full black Africans. But then they had to go with the extra plot of, like, oh, the villain who's clearly just, like, basically a super-powered blonde ubermensch has now turned one of the main characters into a blonde chick with even paler skin than she had before. Like, come on. Yeah, no RE5 stands here. Definitely. Only people that keep standing for that are the people that really love the co-op or, like, hold the the sanctity of the lore on a way higher pedestal. Because, again, remember, there are people who out there that I'm pretty sure, or even know, that don't like this game just because of, like, the direction it tries to go with in the lore. The fact that they just straight up go, hey, Umbrella as an, as a company is dead because the Raccoon City incident put them on the on the spotlight and caused them to lose their right as a business. Oh, don't don't even remind me on on that the stupid thing on his uh, on her chest. Yeah, that's and that's like incredibly short sighted, and I feel and like. It's funny because I forget who the name of the person is, but I recall there being like an old Capcom like producer or whatever who for some reason like somehow thought, uh, felt that the way the Resident Evil story should go is that Umbrella should have always been like this omnipresent like entity that never ever goes away and is the eternal protagonist. And I think people at, at Capcom, even Inafune of all people, was like... No, that's stupid. You're stupid. And then that dude that was fighting for that idea left and made, like, the Genji games, or whatever it was called. You know, the one that got a sequel as the PS3 launch game with the giant enemy crab. But it's like... The need for it to be specifically Umbrella is so ludicrous because of how the damage from the Raccoon City incident makes it that... Like... The whole threat of bioweapons is already out there. You no longer need it to be solely the responsibility of this company with a red and a red and white octagonal like logo. You know, because you have Wesker, which Code Veronica at the time proved that yes, he was alive and became super powered. You have Spencer, who is somehow was somewhere out there in the world. And then, of course, you just have, like, the knowledge that all this bioweapon stuff is out there and that people, any terrorists, could make it. Yeah, or make a good version of them in RE7. Although, it's like, at least with that, I'm able to ignore it to some degree just because, A, the purpose is different, and B, they don't draw as nearly as much attention to it in every single scene. The Neo Umbrella stuff in RE6 was, like, the worst about that, though. Good grief. Like, that was just a bad idea. Especially with, like, what the purpose of that organization all ultimately came out to being. And with the plot. And how everything was just the scheme of, like, some freaking incel Illuminati motherfucker that was upset that a clone of his favorite girlfriend decided to cause havoc. All because he made the clone of said girl because he was forever mad that they did not uh, that she basically told him lol no oh god no this is what I get for arguing about how dumb people's uh, arguments about the lore in Resident Evil is good grief yeah it's like you don't need like the word umbrella e anywhere like like, their actions in Raccoon were, like, opening the Pandora's box on this nonsense. That's the point. Oh, great. Great. So, yeah, we gotta do all this nonsense all over again. I'm not even gonna sell the spin-all uh, to him right now, because that's just extra time. I'll do it after the next chapter. Yeah, you know what's actually, like... I think people that, like, go on about how RE5 is way better just from a lore perspective are completely out of their minds just because the other games leading up to it were, like, trying to, like, Umbrella Core specifically lead up to this idea that you were finally going to be able to, like, find where Spencer is and discover, like, his true motives and have, like, a true showdown with him because he's the ultimate mastermind. But, no. 
He's just the delusional old man in the wheelchair who Wesker kills off before you even get to him. In the DLC, because that was cut out from the main game. Like, come on. You complain about Umbrella's suspension of business decree killing them, but somehow are okay with the fact that they did Oswald Spencer dirty like that. Yeah, it's always whack. It's always, like, best when it's, like... I when it's just like reveling in its B action horror shenanigans. That said, though, I still won't fault them for like Wesker's complete insanity in RE5. His character's great. I think we can all appreciate that. Uh. This game didn't crash on me, did it? Oh, no. Uh. One moment, please. <laughs> yeah, actually, while we're while I'm resetting this, let's just keep talking about RE, uh, RE lore and just how completely dumb it is. Rev2 is probably my favorite story-wise. Same. Although I'll disagree with you on that last part about the, uh, with the, uh, with the gameplay uh, not being great. I think it is. I feel it makes better good on, like, the co-op concepts in more interesting ways than they ever did with, like, RE5 and 6. And especially with the whole partner zapping stuff in Zero. But yeah, it's just, it's just budgety. But yeah, I, t I totally appreciate, Brad, I appreciate RE4 st uh, story-wise for, like, the same thing that you're describing. Like, it's got just the right tongue-in-cheekness, you know? Especially with this being at the point in the series where they were like, they're still, they're still having it be primarily voiced in English. They didn't get quite to the po uh, point yet where they started to include Japanese dubs side-by-side -side with it. And... Like, the voice acting and direction they got got better just enough. Not too much that, it be, that it would become totally self-serious. But, like, good enough that it's still able to get a lot of, like, that cheesy cadence across. Even still. <sighs> okay. That was weird. I'm probably just gonna let that cutscene run again. Because, um... Because, again, I'm running this off of an SD card. I'm gonna start Doom Stream myself now, or it'll be too late. Yeah, you you have good luck with that, Gev. Yeah, I'll. Yeah, hopefully I'll do a lot better with like the lead up to this cabin. Good grief, man! If I'm already doing this bad, just imagine what would happen if I decided to do my Ninja Guy and Black Master uh, Master Ninja Run stream. That's that's gonna be a whole mess. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I completely... Oh, yeah, that's right. <sighs> Man, what are we at in so far? An hour and a half? Nah, that's fine. We can still beat the cabin. I don't know if I'll ha still have enough energy left to beat Mendez. But I at least, once we get to Chapter 2-3, I want to get through both of like those uh, passages, you know? The left to right ones. Yeah, it's just ugh. Of all the things that I'm having trouble with, it's not what it's not the thing that I was fully expecting to actually have the most trouble with. You know? Cause Mendez is real tough. Even when you know what to do. Just getting a good hit on him, especially in a second form, and staggering him as a result is No! No, 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 no. Oh. God damn it. Well, at least she's back health-wise to where she was the last time I played this. Oh. <laughs> Why do I even get up in the morning? Nah, that's too harsh. Yeah, let's actually just try and lure him out a bit more this way. Oh, 
Okay. And... Hmm. Shotgun it is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, just tough it out, Ashley. Not much I can do. I ain't... I ain't sparing this soul green herb for you. Oh yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, so okay, yeah. Rule one. Once I clear out the chicken farm, I am going to use that typewriter right away. Uh, because I completely forget every time that that thing is in there. It's just, oh man. And the funny thing is that if I was not playing this on stream, I would still be trying to go for my no deaths run and there'd be a whole lot more, like, reloading of checkpoints. And a whole lot more setbacks as a result. Yep. The trick with the torch guys is to always shoot them right when they're about to spit fire in your face. Yeah, it did. Like, it didn't even send me back to the chicken farm because I didn't even save there. It literally, like, I I had only made that save inside the church. The little, the little mini chapel. Yep, more notes that are not worth it. Did you try pressing both buttons for QTEs? Not yet, just because the only uh, two button QTEs I had been getting were in the uh, El Gigante fight where you have to press L and R because I think those are the only time, only ones that show up. See, so, yeah, I haven't tried out if pressing A and B uh, uh, or L and R works on either of those. But with the amount of setbacks I've been having right now, I'm still kind of scared to even try that. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I'm just gonna save myself the trouble and just, like, pop these dudes' heads. Oh, wait. No, she's still gotta plug us. <laughs> she's still standing there, like, whatever. It's what legends are made of. Yeah. Oh wait, there's no one coming behind me, is there? Yeah. This game just makes you paranoid about that stuff. Oh yeah, that's right, the Mendes cutscene does, like, randomize the input. I'll try that, at least. What? Why did it? No! No. Oh, thank goodness Plagas didn't spawn from them. Are you truly a professional if you don't start at the beginning of the game each time you die? I'm pretty sure that's not a necessary prerequisite for that. That's only if you're carcinogen. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't wasting a flash grenade on you. Get lost. Okay, what else do we got right now? What the? Oh my goodness. Where did you come from? Double tap in the butt. Okay. Keep picking up all the stuff here. Sh 
Sure wish there were still chickens running around. Be nice to to have it across a couple extra eggs. You know? Would be nice. Maybe even an extra golden one. I don't know. I'm not picky. No potatoes that time. Yeah. Oh yeah, 20. Ugh. It really is kind of frustrating how like the... Oh wait! Okay, that's where that guy came from who dropped down. He literally left his spot because I was drawing aggro uh, around that side of the fence. That explains it. Okay. Yeah, that definitely explains a lot. Okay, cool. So this area is technically cleared of enemies. That's fine. We can call Ashley back. And then we will actually save this time. We're not going to make the same mistake. I'll, I'm at least thankful that uh, that when the game did crash on me, that it did not produce a horrible buzzing sound. Because I've had that uh, happen before, surprisingly consistently. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, clearly, clearly you've got like the the data to like watch both and like hopefully a, a consistently good image quality. At least give me the good play-by-play -play on like how he's doing with Eternal. You know, if anything interesting comes up, that'll be nice. Man, I can't wait for that DLC tomorrow. If it wasn't being dropped so soon, I would try and make time to like take some days off of work just to play through that. You know, like, do a regular nightmare run, then extra lives mode. Like, that'd be great, because, oh, so much of that is shaping up to be something amazing. Especially that final boss fight. With how Hugo's described it, and if it totally does play out as great as he's making it sound. Just, oh... Yeah, plus the Hellbreaker Hammer, like, that that's already an immediately better system than what the Crucible was. The, the new uh, enemy varieties, which are, like, not entirely new, but, like, they're reskins of older enemies that are different just enough. Like, the Stone Imps that straight up do Blanca Balls. Like, that's, that's an amazing Welcome. touch. The Armored Barons look pretty cool, too. And the fact that they... In fact, that at least, like, in the, the one of the screenshots, at least, uh, was able to, like, confirm it that way, that chain gunners are back. Something that I never thought that Is they that would go back to just because of how inherently hit-scan those enemies are designed to be. But no, they're, they're totally Boy, back. They're quiet. pulling out all the stops. Sonic the Imp. Yeah, kind of. Well, well I said Blanca Ball specifically just because they do... Exactly what uh, what Blanco would do, where it's just like a go into the air, curl into a ball, and just shoot forward in a straight horizontal direction. If it was along the ground, then I would be with you in saying Sonic the Imp, because otherwise that'd be a straight up spin dash. Still, it's totally cool. Yeah. Well, on the flip side, we've got slightly more health uh, items to work with. We'll at least have two full heals Leon, once we get all the herbs in the and the uh, in the cabin. All right, now just to be safe, let this cutscene run its course again, so that I don't trigger another uh, another hard block. Hate to say it, but we're sandwiched, all right. Quick, in that cabin. Uh -oh. Leon. Small world, yeah. eh? Well, Whew. thirsty too. See that the president's uh, drinking every now and then. With ballistics too. How rude! And I don't believe there's any relevance <laughs> with my figure and my man, standing. Man, you're a braver you? man than I am. Oh, excuse me, your highness. Perhaps the young lady 
might want to introduce herself first before asking someone his name. Her name's Ashley Graham, the president's daughter. Is she... well, you know. Don't worry. She's cool. Eh, never mind. There's supposed to be some kind of obvious symptom before you turn into one of them anyway. <gasps> Look! <sighs> Ashley, upstairs! Okay, it's game time. It is pretty good, yeah. Very satisfying to hear that. Okay, move, Louis. Or Louis. I keep going back and forth between either the correct uh, pronunciation or the uh, air quotes correct pronunciation. Because <laughs> again, like, Leon just calls him Louis, like the filthy American that he is. Okay, mix these. Oh, I got oh I got a surplus of extra shotgun ammo. I'm definitely gonna keep using this. Yeah, I'm definitely like I'm glad that I have the red nine right now, but I'm still not at that point again where like I'm I I can confidently. Uh... Oh, thank goodness it did still keep enough room. But yeah, I'm at a point where I don't think, especially in this situation, that I can confidently keep up with my red nine shots. So many enemies get crowded in this uh, in this space. Oh right, and there's like another frag grenade in here. Oh shoot, oh yeah. I'll I'll use up the shotgun ammo here and then. Come get some. Whoa, 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 buddy. Take it easy. No. Ah, whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, screw it. Flash, flash grenade it is. Heads up. Oh, and you know what? Just for extra measure, have a frag. Just for you. Oh, such an intense uh, scenario, but God, is it ever so good. Oh my goodness, how did that miss? Thank you, Lewis, for the save! Oh my goodness, where would I be without you? My good Spanish ex-cop buddy. Oh my goodness, it is just loading me up on flash grenades right now. No! Ah! Oh, couldn't move in time. Yep, in the best of... No! Oh, no. Okay, another full heal it is. I'm just gonna give myself some room with the... Yeah. Because there was a Plagas active. Ugh. You can very much tell that it has been a long freaking time since I've played through this whole, like, section. Oh, come on! No, 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 no. Ah. This is getting real bad. Well, last heal. Oh, dear. Oh, thank goodness. Good thing you can just keep dodging. Oh my goodness! Lewis, where would I be without you? I am so happy! Oh, and there's another health item that I can pick up.
yes! That's what the quick aim turning is good for. Yeah. As always, they start pushing you back to the second floor. Because it gets too crowded down there. Oh, right, I forgot that there's a third window. Oh, wait, fourth window. Oh, my goodness. Oh. God bless the shotgun. But now I think I kind of need to... Start holding on to some of this ammo. Absolutely. Yeah, just nothing. Nothing has come close to this again. Like a once in the universe moment. It is insane. Yeah, it's almost there. Oh, wait. Funny enough, that was it. Okay. Oh. Oh, my heart. <laughs> so, oh. What do we do now? The bridge I crossed to get here is out. Hopefully, by the end of this, I still have enough to get that rocket launcher. Because I, uh... Hmm. Because depending on how much I have after this, I may... I may need to do the left path first to get some money. Because, oh, I really do not want to pass up on the treasures in that area. Because both the left and right paths have the remaining gems I need to complete the elegant headdress. Oh, yeah. Too bad Ashley's. Too bad Ashley's health is still poor. Which, you know what? <sighs> Fine. You get one. Good, because that gave you back all your health. There's nothing else I need to get from here. Okay. Anything else I'm missing from this area is there. Oh, no, there's no treasures in this open room. So, yeah. Two, three. Uh... The area that's got a whole lot of big moments, because it's got the left and right paths, and it's also got the uh, the Mendez fight. Oh look, some some useless TMP ammo that I can straight up sell. Still, is there anything else on this side that I can pick up? Nope. Well, alrighty then. Actually, where's my? 13,500. Yeah, I feel like that's not going to be enough. I want to say that the amount for the rocket launcher was way, way more. Oh, dear. What is a guy to do? Welcome. What are you selling? What are you buying? Yeah, rocket launcher's 30k. What are I, you selling? Oh. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Like, ugh. it sucks because I still obviously want to keep the red nine. Selling, oh. I could sell the beer stein early. I could sell that early, and my one freaking green herb. <laughs> Because it's like... Yeah, because the only gem that's left for this is a cat's eye. I only need, like, two more red gems that are on the left and right path. Just... Mmm. Mmm. Oh, my goodness. I... Oh, God damn it. What are you what are we... <sighs> Come back, Screw it. I'll just take the left path first and deal with, like, the Bella sisters and all that. I'll try and see if they can give me any more pesetas or stuff that I can sell. And once that's done, I'll go back, sell any remaining stuff I have, 
if uh, without the beer stein first. But if it doesn't come to that, I'll sell the beer stein and then just take the rocket launcher to El Gigante. It is nice, though, all things considered, that they do give you the option of going down both paths. You know, choosing one doesn't permanently lock you out of the other. That's that's good. Because they knew that they were hiding special treasures in both. Which, if I recall... Oh, wait! Yes, that's right, because the Bella Sisters, they also drop rubies. I just remembered, they drop rubies like Dr. Salvador. Plus the, uh... Plus the eye gem for the elegant mask. Yeah, I think that that might work out. We may have a chance. We may have a chance of salvaging this. This could work. Oh yeah, one extra save, I think, just to be on the safe side of things. Because I also think in officially dealing with the Bella Sisters, it's probably going to like eat through the rest of my grenades. With the, uh, yeah... One frag, two flame, like, I feel there's just no other way. Yeah, this is reminding me definitely, like... Because when I first played Professional, this chapter was the moment that really si uh, settled in for me how hard this mode could actually get. Because this is where... <laughs> believe it's orange eye on left and purple eye on right. Yeah, but the idea is that I'm gonna be needing both, is the thing. There we go. Winning out, use fire and explosions. Anyway, go dumpster diving for a bit, girl. I'm busy. Come on. No! No, 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 no! Why did it not? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Two over. At least this counts as a continue point. There we go. There. There we go. Whoa! I... Yep. I heard you jumping down, lady. Oh, double head explosion, I think. No, just one. Okay. Hell, okay. Music's died down. Try and take this out meticulously as possible because once I spawn those sisters, I am gonna have to book it right back there. Man, could you imagine if the level design in the campaign for RE4 took more cues from the design ideas they took for the mercenary maps, where there is no safe back wall to rely on? <laughs> you keep coming back to me succeeding. <laughs> Well, you're getting all the good highlights right now. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I remember at least with this, the uh, the Bella sisters do not spawn until mother. Ah! I don't want to have to reload the checkpoint again. Ugh. All right, that's number three. I swear I'm not this bad normally when it comes to aiming a handgun. But then again, I think it's just because by the time I get to the castle, I'm able to upgrade it enough where, like, the power... The firepower is able to do enough to compensate. Because otherwise, I'd be just dumping as much shotgun ammo as possible. But the ammo stacks for it just don't go nearly as high as the pistol. Although I might. 
or not. No, because I just want to save as much of it as possible for when I take on the on the Bella Sisters. Because those are going to be the things I use after I expend my grenades. Just because we've not done enough of that, if at all. That I kept going for, like, headshots instead of kneecaps almost consistently. Just because I like the roundhouse a lot more. But rest assured, once we get to the castle, I'll be doing a lot more kneecaps. Because, come on. Suplexing evil priests. You can't say no to that. It's too good. Oh my goodness. Just... There's definitely an increase in difficulty with everything you do when you're streaming it online for the internet to watch and having to talk at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, I'll just get the shotgun out right now, just to deal with the three that show up this way! Or, yeah, go back and forth. This is also another good example of why inventory management like this is important. Because whenever I need to go back and forth between the shotgun and the pistol, it's just a matter of tapping the D-pad up or down. Or, or actually not up at all once I go into the menu. Wait, is there? No, it's still just the one. Okay. We're in the clear. Yeah. Okay, 25 spare and 10 in the chamber. This is gonna be... Hmm. Oh, at least two green herbs as well, so... Oh yeah, and that's right, we still have plenty of rifle ammo. But yeah, the thing is that when the Bella Sister spawns, when you go down into that pit, you do not want to be in that pit at all, you know? It's too open of a space. Like... The strategy I go with is that I need to re-raise that ladder, go up onto this ledge, jump off there, and go straight to the door and have that at my back. Leon, I know you jump down for everything, but why do you need to always kick down ladders when there's clearly no one using them? Oh, great. Here it is. Just, ugh. Uh, those sisters have seen better days. No, 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 no! Oh. Screw it. That's good enough. I'll get my grenades ready. Alright, ladies, come this way. Or, no, not you. I'll... Okay, yeah, that's how you tell when they're absolutely down for good, is when they're... Even when they're on fire, they have to... Yes. Okay. That's a good thing to remember when playing this on Professional. Even the Ganados, when you set them on fire, shoot them one more time. Because the charred bodies, as they're fla flailing, is a very good indicator of they're actually dead. Okay, just keep dumping everything. Okay, I'm actually gonna take advantage of the fact that I do have... Oh no, this might be too close, too close! No! Oh! Yes, kick! Okay, that's one down. And that's two. Okay, we are safe. Ugh. And all I have left for grenades is a single flash. That's fine. Oh, man. 
You catch that, Raph? Did you once again continue your streak of catching me every time I... Oh, what the heck? Oh, no. It's only one that drops the key. And only one of them drops the ruby. Shoot. Well, hmm. Dang it. Well, okay, what other is there? Right, yeah, I, I should at least clear out just enough of this so that I get one of the one of the eye gems. Yeah. Chances are I probably could have gotten away without having to use that flash grenade if I just kept with the shotgun. But I don't know. Just didn't feel right. There's a point where you gotta stop taking like crazy risks and just go with whatever's the safest. Oh, well, at least, yeah. You know, if there's one thing that the random item drops I am always thankful for is whenever the game decides to give me a health item. Because even if I'm good at conserving ammo, it knows that I am very poorly at conserving my health. There's just no way around that. So yeah, thanks, game. Thank you, Shinji Mikami, for continuing to show just how amazingly designed this game was in every single way. And the music cuts out. Such a relief every time. It's great. Whew. All right. Oh, and it's... I've only been at this for two hours so far. It's fine. Depending on how much faster everything else goes. Yeah. Hopefully I can still get to Mendez. I'm not going to make any promises about whether or not I can actually beat him tonight. But because of what Oni was telling me about with the QTEs, I feel I should at least try that to make sure it works. Because whether or not I can just press all four buttons and it'll still work instead of just the two and hey if it fails then you'll at least be treated to a QTE death that I'm pretty sure I've never had happen to me in a regular playthrough so that's something yeah it's just oh yeah and that's right at the end of this there's that whole mob that comes rushing at you which I think might be a good chance for more Pesetas, but by the same token, I am down to just a single flash. That's not going to help out too much. But yeah, this passage around here should be around where they start, where I get the, the eye gem that I need. Or not. Huh. Oh, wait! Yeah, we'll use this. This will be helpful for the final group of enemies. All right, you can't. Yeah, I think it's yeah. It's actually in a different. It's like a it's like a boarded up window that you have to break open and then jump through. I'm remembering now. I think. Unless. Ah, oh, hold on. Let me check the map again. Yeah, I forget. Is it actually on this side or the other that I have to find that window? I'm not sure. Whatever. Grenade time. Just eat, eat shrapnel, you freaks. <laughs> that did not blow up nearly as many Ganados as I was hoping it would. What a disappointment. Okay, you know what? 
dealing with two active Plaguses just aren't worth it. That's when you know it's time to use a, a flash grenade at the right time. One by itself is more than enough. Oh, thank goodness, they were still stunned by that. Or him, rather. Okay. I always remember this going a whole lot worse when it happens, but whatever. Okay. Ugh. Do you know during the truck part, right before the castle, you can be walking behind facing the door and enemies won't spawn until you go back to face the castle? Uh, funny enough, I actually did know, know that, yeah. I actually noticed it myself for the first time. Though, I didn't do it to the point that they were able to, like, that I was able to get to the, uh, straight up to where the drawbridge is. Because I think by the time I got to the hill, I decided to turn around then, and that's when I noticed, oh yeah, they don't spawn until you actually turn around. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool little detail. Okay, so... Hmm. Alright, so yeah, it's not on this side. I have to go back up the ladder and around to get into the room with the, uh, with the eye gem. And I'm still short of 20k, which is frustrating because if I recall, selling a ruby is only worth 10k. That's still going to put me just under. Good grief. Unless it was... Oh, I'm an idiot. I think the other the way into that passage is to go... Is to go back into the pit. I think because there's another door or something similar. Ah, dang it. Assuming it is in here, I think. Do y'all know that in gun game you can have a draw? Cause oh, oh, in in, in line us, uh, uh, Gagan. Yeah. Although I guess I guess for clarity, like which which game is it that has gun game? Because I feel like that could be a mode in anything. How am I missing the path to... Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Yeah, I'm curious. Just like what... How am I completely blanking on where I need to go to get that stupid gem? Oh, okay, you were playing Valorant, gotcha, okay. Because I know it's somewhere around here. Is it somewhere back through that door? Yes, Resi 4 is so godlike. As always. You definitely missed a lot that happened. A lot of, a lot of crazy stuff. A few deaths. We even had a hard lock because I'm running this game off an SD card in Nintendo. So, there are some parts where uh, it just reads the data a bit wrong and then goes kaput. So, yeah, that's fun. Okay, it's gotta be... Something I'm completely missing. Has to be on this side. Oh yeah, we did do the cabin part. That was actually where the uh, soft lock happened, funny enough. Because... Oh, I'm an idiot. This was the... Uh... This was the, the window I had to go through. God damn it. Yep, the Bella sisters. Took care of them. Right now, I am trying to, uh, well, I got a flash grenade, but I've been trying to save up for a strat that involves buying a rocket launcher to circumvent the El Gigante fights in the other hallway, because I want to get all the treasures from there, but, but, like, I got the ruby from one of the sisters, but I know that's not going to be enough to give me the 30k, so I'm probably going to have to sell off some ammo 
or worst case scenario, sell off the Bierstein early. This, I think, in any other game or scenario, this would be what you'd call a run killer. Because this is contingent on you playing through the first few hours, hoping that you are good enough with your money that you have enough. Oh, you know what, actually, now that I think about it, this probably would have been avoided if I had just stayed behind in that water room before the Del Lago fight and just, like, killed all the enemies there and gotten their Peseta drops. Because that probably would have helped. But I didn't because I it was getting a bit late for me uh, when I was streaming that I just wanted to get to the Del Lago fight right away. Welcome. Okay. Yeah, Ruby's 10k. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Not selling... I don't want to sell either of those yet. I could sell the herbs, but I'm so bad with health already. Huh. How much could I get away with for... Oh. Yeah, I'll take the hit. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, fine. What are you buying? <sighs> Give me a rocket launcher. Hopefully, I forget, because this fits vertical. Yes, it does. Yeah, as I remember, it does fit within the vertical height of the attache case medium. Or not? Wait. Oh, are you kidding? Ugh, fine. Move all this stuff up. Done. <laughs> Thank you. Come back anytime. Oh. Still the best inventory. As mocking as that might have sounded. <laughs> But, it is legit the best inventory system ever. Alright. Now to deal with the El Gigantes and kill him before he ruins my chance to get the other eye gem and the three spinels in that area. We should be good. Cool. I'll even get this equipped in advance, because why not? <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah. Especially if I still have enough energy by that point to take on Mendez. Anyway, here's El Gigante. Most people, when they play through it, would just, like, try and fight them the normal way by... But also having to deal with... Actually, move already. I know, but I'm not gonna use that. Whoa. <laughs> Come on. Get away. Get away. I was far enough away that I didn't even need to do the prompt, but it was worth it. And there we go. Uh, an easy kill on that basically made back half of my payment for that rocket launcher. <laughs> oh. That was fun. But yeah, trying to fight that El Gigante in this hallway with Ashley around is is just like a net negative, no matter how you spin it. Because even if you know how to juke uh, like and read Gigante's attacks, Ashley's not really going to be able to do that the same way you are. So it's kind of a lost cause. But hey... We get all these items now with nothing crushed underneath because of that giant monster. There's the three spinels. Plenty of handgun ammo too. Way more than I need. 
So let's see. I recall there being like something up above that you gotta shoot to make it drop. Somewhere. Well, I could at least shoot the light out just to make it easier. Oh, I see it. I see it. Is this even the right angle to shoot it at? Yes, it is. There we go. Purple gem. And finally, we can complete one of these treasures that we've been holding on to for so long. And we'll eventually get the final cat side to complete the beer stein. Whew. What a game. It says a lot about me that I'm generally pretty good about conserving ammo, that I can justify that that I always pick up so much ammo that it's practical for me to expend it on these on these uh, like chains or boxes rather than just knifing them, you know? Okay, so we're on the other side now. Let's see. Yeah, there's no more spinels to get except for the one in the Mendez Arena. So it's that in the cat's eye. We can at least sell off some of this Welcome. stuff now. Okay. What are you selling? Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that all? <laughs> Not Thank selling you. the golden egg, obviously, because I want to save that for my for my silly thing right at the end of the game. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. That's what good. Are you buying? Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have any more options for tuning our weapons up, but that's fine. It'll be what even better once buying? we're uh, able to, like, you know, buy the riot gun once we get to the castle and the semi-auto. That's always a good time. Yeah, I need to reorganize this again. Hopefully there's another yellow orb somewhere. I want to say it's like in this area, or at least in this cabin. If not, then on the other side of the gondola. Oh, such a comforting save room. Well, more rifle ammo, that's always good. Yellow's in the boss fight? Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, now I'm remembering that. That's correct, yeah. Let's get this ready, because the little gondola segment is always a fun time, assuming that you are on top of skeet shooting these uh, these ganados before they even see you. Because uh, that's a fun time. I also like how this is the moment where the game starts messing with you as far as how many places can the merchant be in all at once, because he's right here. And as you all know, he's also on that other side. And I'm pretty sure you can get a good uh, shot at the, uh, uh, like, a, a good view of that uh, earlier place. Use the shotgun for the gondola? I guess, yeah, if, you, if you're fine with them getting that close. So much handgun ammo. Good grief. But then again, I'm already going over, like, my suggested limit for, like, uh, for rifle ammo. You shoot for range, okay. Oh, 
Oh, come on. I forgot that he's right there first. You cannot see my giant middle finger right now over that. But yeah, that happened. This is why I need my VTuber avatar. It's why I need to stop being so lazy and just take some of my stimulus money and just commission that right now. Commission not only the avatar, but also animations for different, like, hand motions. So that depending on how things go, I can either give a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or just flip the bird with both hands. Because some, because sometimes there are moments in games where that kind of gesture is the only way to adequately convey my disgust for some bullshit. It is ridiculous sometimes. Okay, so yeah, first things first, just aim for that dude that is clearly going to be coming on the gondola up first. Then get the dude who is just on the platform. It's weird, I'm just forgetting the small details about how you're actually supposed to do this, because I remember the full... I remember the broad strokes of it. And weirdly enough, I've only, you know, played this game... I actually last played this game back in September. Like, the start of September, funny enough. It was once I moved to my new place. I had my... I brought my soft modded Wii with me, loaded up... ISO of RE4 on it, and it was this, and it was like, yeah, we'll do a normal run playthrough on this. Why not? But then again, in the grand scheme of things, I've spent more time on normal difficulty playthroughs than I have professional, just by nature of the fact that you know, one's slightly easier and has the dynamic difficulty to compensate for versus this, where the dynamic difficulty is no longer there. It is what. What am I forgetting? Oh, fuck. I completely forgot that. I am completely losing it tonight. No. I refuse to keep the going through with the stream until I do this perfectly. Until I remember exactly where all these freaking ganados are. I forgot, yeah, because there's, there's more than one that jump down onto the gondolas. That's the whole point of those people off to the side. Ugh. Good grief. Yeah. I think especially at this point with it getting close to... I think, like, especially because I'm trying to be mindful of when my sister's going to bed and all that, that I don't want to... I don't want to keep this going for too long... And knowing how my voice carries and how thin the walls are, it would it would not be fair for her to keep hearing me do this for too long. Okay. There, three for one. Good. Take care of you ahead of time. Yes, Ashley, silently cheer for me behind my back. Do a little fist pump every time. Ah, oh, didn't get all three. But I think that's it now. Okay. It should be it, yep. Oh wait, no. Last one. And there you go. Third time's the charm. Whew. Well, that's not too bad. Hell yeah, you installed the Doom. Yeah. Too bad my job is the sort of thing where there is really no work from home solution. Otherwise, I would use that as the excuse to, uh, uh, to like stay home and play Ancient Gods Part 2. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's like, I've been ahead of the curve. I've kept that game installed, you know? I'm always checking back uh, back in on it every week. Playing a couple levels, doing the weekly challenges. 
It's all good. It's all a good time. Oh, look at that castle. My favorite thing about that is that normally when you're running down here for the first time, you're so focused on the stairs you don't even notice the castle. But once you're done with Mendez and you're backtracking up here, the camera gives you a good shot of this as a very, very nice preview of what's to come. Castle so good. <laughs> I could sit through the boring opening of this game, or I could just fire up Doom. Yep. That's, uh, that's a good way of looking at it. So... Wait. Oh! That was clutch. I wasn't even directly aiming at the dynamite, but the spread still got him. No, no, I actually don't want to waste any more of my shotgun ammo, actually. Lead 9. Ooh! Look at that chunky salsa. Follow me. Uh, moments like that are always the best reminder of why you absolutely love Resident Evil 4. Okay. More pesetas, that's good. Oh, hey, it's that sacrificial altar that they decided to use for Ada in her dumb separate ways campaign. <laughs> you mean the greatest game ever made? I mean, I don't know if I'd still go... I don't know if I, even as someone who adores this game, would go to the same lengths of it being the sing singular greatest game ever made. But it's up there. It absolutely is. What's important, though, is that you still love it unconditionally. Okay, and we finally have gotten the last uh, piece for the beer stein. Looking forward to selling that off. Now, the real question is, do I have what it takes to take care of Mendez this time? And, like, not uh, drag this stream out for too long. Because that's going to be, uh... Whew. Oh, right, and they give you ammo and flash grenades over here. Wait, no. Oh, my eyes deceived me. It wasn't the flash grenade at all. It was TNP ammo. Ah. Curse you, Resident Evil 4. Is that all? Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to sell off 50 of this. I can't. Is that Keep old? dealing with this amount of ammo <laughs> for the handgun. <sighs> but yeah, this will at least put us at a good enough amount that we'll be able to buy our new weapons at the castle and upgrade them. Though it would have been nice if the merchant would just give me another round of upgrades for the Red 9. You know, that'd be very appreciated for this coming fight. Come back, We good? Okay, we good. <sighs> At least his arena has some health items, including the next yellow herb. That'll be useful. Because at least what's important right now is that I'm at... Uh, I'm still in fine health and not caution. Okay, so what do we got? Oh yeah, I still need to reload this. So it's like... Yeah. 91 spare handgun ammo... 22 for shotgun, 15 for rifle. Okay. Assuming I do not uh, choke with my rifle shots, I should be good. Yeah. Uh, Oni, if you're still in here, quick refresher tips on, like, what good weapons to use for Mendes specifically in his second form, because that's always where I end up dying when I go back to this game after a while. Because the harder part I recall about that is trying to get him stunned and fall onto the floor for easy shots. Okay, could you give me a more, like, uh, practical and respectable uh, option that isn't the TMP? <laughs> you know? Something that is more conducive to 
someone who sticks by the Red Nine, a good shotgun, and a good rifle. Now, I guess I'll just figure it out as I go along. But at least this will be a good time to uh, try out that trick you were talking about with the QTEs, assuming it does work. If I just press all four buttons instead of the two that it prompts. Let's see. <laughs> Are you serious? I mean, I generally try to keep an open mind and say that, like... There are more than one right ways to play Resident Evil 4. But with how much people meme up the TMP as being the secret amazing weapon, I feel obligated to meme it up in the opposite direction and say that is the wrong way to play. Oh my god, it worked! It totally did work! Oni, you were super right! I just pressed all four buttons at the same time! Oh my goodness! Yes! Oh! Yes! Oh! Gigan, this is, again, more proof why you, me, and Wrath are the eternal gang. We always got the best of takes. Wait, what did I do? I pressed L, R, A, and B at the same time. And it still registered that I hit two of those four buttons that were the correct ones. That was awesome. Oh my goodness. I almost feel like we could just end this stream on a high note right here. Yeah, it's like, I never thought to do that. I imagine that, like, it only really works in situations like this where the prompts are randomized, which... Oh my god, now that I realize that, I... The tension from the Krauser knife fight is suddenly sucked away. Oh my goodness, I don't have to worry anymore which bun prompts it's gonna give me because I'll just hit all four. That is amazing. Holy shit. Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, first things first, as part of this fight, get all the important items, including that. Whoa. Gave me a promise, but it's not like it mattered, so, uh, yeah. Ugh. Thank you, Oni. Thank you a lot. It somewhat redeems you for the TMP usage in this fight. <laughs> sort of. No, 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 well, yeah, well, okay, it's fine. Got an incendiary. <laughs> Australia redeems itself. Yeah, d definitely try not to use it. Absolutely. Because I do feel like when you have the red, uh, the red 9 upgraded enough, and you're good with your shots, like, yeah, it's not automatic, but you get such a good, like, rate of fire with it that I feel it in... That, like, you get that fast uh, bullet firing that you get with the TMP, but not nearly as fast or as boring. Because that's always the kind of the, the core problem of it. Yeah, like... It makes sense enough if you're using it as, like, an emergency weapon. And I described it in the first stream that I did this, where, like, it makes sense to use it if you're not confident enough with the aiming system yet. Because of the, the sway and everything. No, 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 no. Ah, it's just trying to get to the other side of that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Wait, no, I didn't want to switch the key treasures. What the hell? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay, shotgun time. Oh, wait, actually, because I have flash grenades, I'm going to double check to see if that might help. Woo! Nailed it. Good, yes, that's always the safest time to run past him. I'm actually gonna do a quick reload of this just to be safe. 
Because I don't want to be stuck having to reload the rifle once he gets to his second phase, because that's the real doozy. Okay, what do we got? Oh. You know that's the nice thing about that, like, light hit that he does? It doesn't damage you. It's only a stagger. Yes! Okay, good. Okay, I can switch to the rifle now. Woo! And as well as the flash grenades, because I think that's the only guaranteed way I'm gonna... Hmm. Yeah, because once he gets close enough, he does... He really hurts. Yep, okay. No, 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 that was bad. That was not what I wanted. No, no. Oh, this is exactly the same problem that I always run into. No, 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 no. Damn it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't feel comfortable trying to hit him from that side. Again, why? Ugh. You know what? No. You know, if I die on this, I'm just gonna call it end for stream. It's getting late enough. Because it's like, I know there's a way that you can, like, shoot him in, like, the right spot that it makes him fall off the beams. But I'm just not getting it. What? Oh my goodness. Completely missed the prompt. Like, it is ridiculous that when he gets that close, like, it somehow, like, does not give you a chance at a QTE dodge. I feel that, like, makes this so much harder than it should be. Oof. Ah, uh, yeah, I recall that. Oh dear, no, and this is bad too, because I, I do not want to have to reload this right now. I don't want to have to reload my guns unless I absolutely need to! Wait, is that... This is going to get real tough. Well, yeah, I do not like this. I do not like this at all. No, no, no. Oh, panic, panic. Is that? Oh, my. Oh, I clutched it out. Oh, oh. Well, I guess it's settled. We are going to be completing Act 2 tonight. Granted, I am down to danger health status, but this is... Oh. Mm. You have no idea how relieved I am right now. Even though I have completely wasted all the... Oh, son of a bitch, I completely forgot that there's a red barrel in this arena. I could have used that early on. I am an idiot. But is that all? Yeah, I think that's all. Oh. Is there... Oh, wait. Hopefully I didn't forget there was... Uh, no, I am not okay. And in fact, I may have forgotten that there was a spinel in there. I forget. Yes, I did. Whatever. I mean, who cares? I got the key treasures in this area that it doesn't matter. It's a freaking spinel. Those things only sell for like 2,000 a piece, and I'm loaded on cash right now. Like, 
yeah, I just broke 100k. Ugh. And you know what the worst part about this is right now? I'm still holding on to that gold mag. It would be a full heal right now if I wanted to pop it. But I don't. I want to save it for the end of the game. It's supposed to be my good luck charm. That I throw it Saddler in his stupid eyeball face. Okay, but I think I can still do the final, final leg of this chapter without, without needing a heal just yet. So yeah, hope you appreciated me, against all odds, managing to get through the Mendez fight without a single death. Whereas I ended up dying on all the other places in this, uh, on this stream that I did not expect to. I died on El Gigante, I died in the cabin, I died on the conveyor belt, the gondola thing or whatever it was, just, oh. Well, yes, it's congratulations well earned. Thanks. Oh, whew. He was. This was the start of, like, his action high period, you know? It was this that continued into God Hand and then concluded with Vanquish. <laughs> he made a gondola fun. He made an escort mission fun. <laughs> Absolute unit. Yeah, I totally did miss the spinel. It was absolutely in the uh, in the arena. I was just, I was so exhausted from that fight already that I just wanted to leave. But hey, at least we uh, the actual last treasure in this. Funny enough, across this door is the uh, is the blue velvet. Cautiously optimistic for Ghostwire. Yeah, I am. I'm still bummed overall that uh, that Ikumi Nakajima had to leave just because of how passionate and excited she was when she was, like, revealing that game and how it was, like... Like, it's both upsetting that the fact that she had to leave for whatever reasons that I can't imagine were good. Like, yeah, it's very suspect. But it also upsets me just knowing that, like, the fallback plan was having to basically keep disrupting Mikami's, uh, like, his whole retirement plan from directing... Because the whole point of Tango from the beginning was that he wanted to create a place that'll, like, give new fledgling directors a chance. And the only one that really did get that chance was, uh, was John Johannes or whoever it was that directed Evil Within 2. And granted, I think he did a bang-up job. Okay, good. Yeah, like, he did, a, he did a solid job on Evil Within 2, even if there are people that, like, feel that it lost whatever, like, that special something was that Evil Within 1 had. Which, in all honesty, I think the trade-off was more than fine, just because of how absolutely uneven Evil Within 1 ended up being. Yeah, I'll use that green herb. But yeah... It's kind of a shame. Still, I just hope that it is the sort of thing where even with Mikami having to uh, do direct uh, do directing duty again, hopefully he can pull through on it and have it be a lot more consistent than Evil Within 1. Because it felt so much in that game like he was just doing like a uh, self-fulfilling prophecy of sorts and just did not care as much of applying his same directorial approach that worked for this game for God Hand and to and definitely like for uh for Vanquish. Okay, what do we got? Yep, that's the blue velvet. Let's go. I am not going to waste any time. Or maybe I will. Let's end this Let's end this tonight's stream on one last bang. Because I don't think that these are infinitely spawning. Oh. 
eat hellfire, you bastards. <laughs> Well, that was kind of pointless. Oh, thanks. Dynamic item drops, working as intended. Yeah. Oh, don't mind if I do. Yeah, Evil Within 1 does hit better for what it does. And even for as much as I rag on the first game, it still does have some good moments. Like the, uh, like Chapter 3 is basically that game's version of RE4's Village, and I think it does a pretty good job, and I'm not surprised since that was part of the demo. But then Chapter 9 with the mansion, and most of the following chapter I think was the last high point that game ever had. Oh well. And that's it! Two, done. A bit over schedule, admittedly, because I was definitely hoping that, like, because because I started this stream half an hour early. I think maybe this is a sign that I'm just gonna have to like bump, uh, push up the streaming schedule even further, assuming that I that I keep managing to eat early enough, uh, have my dinner and all that. Then, yeah, starting at like. 7 p.m. Pacific time should be good. Wish I played Evil Within one that wasn't shitty performed when I first played. Yeah, same. I think the only other time that I played it of any amount of it when it was performing better was the demo of the first three chapters. But by that point, like, I realized that even with my computer brute forcing it, I realized that like just the design and feel of it still wasn't as good enough to me compared to the sequel. But yeah, we're ending tonight here. Might have to revisit it. Yeah, you can. You can revisit it on your own time. I won't as far as, like, on my own time or even on stream. Heck, I don't even really intend on wanting to play Evil Within 2 because as much as I like that game more, it still is way more technically demanding than it deserves to be. Yeah, okay, I guess that makes sense. So yeah, that was uh, quite the exciting ride tonight in Resident Evil 4 land. I'm looking forward to the castle, and I'm starting to think that beginning with Act 3 or Act 4, whichever one, I'm probably going to hit a point where even doing a single one of these streams during the night is just not, uh, not going to be feasible to complete a single act in one. Which side of the Evil Within Divide is Ark on? Uh, I think it's pretty clear by how I've been talking about it. Uh, I'm on the side of Evil Within 2 is better. That's just it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... I respect the hell out of Mikami. He's done some amazing stuff. And the highs that are in the first Evil Within are pretty good and indicative of that. But like... It's it's just not worth it for all the other all the other BS that's in it. It's just not. Evil Win within two's highs may not reach it in the same ways, but I'll still appreciate the consistency, especially when at the time it came out, I described it as being a better Last of Us than Last of Us. Like it's funny because of how like people were starting to take notes on the specific mechanics that Last of Us One did. But at least they wrapped it up in a game that was, like, Japanese-made and had a better semblance of what was fun. Though, of course, I've still not played The Last of Us 2, and I don't really intend to, so I have no idea how that game would actually stack compared to, you know, to Evil Within 2. Who knows? Yeah. Either way, I'm getting tired now. I'm sure everyone's here at this place is going to be winding down, so I should shut up and just let the stream process. Yeah, that's very much it. It's funner than the first, but not, but still not my thing. At least this game will forever be my thing. So yeah, have a good night, everyone. Check back in for Friday when I when I stream this next and start talking about this game again and also how amazing the eternal uh, the Doom Eternal DLC is.
because I'm going to preemptively say it'll probably be ball-bustingly awesome. So have a good night.